All right. I believe we are live. We are two weeks into this uh, live podcast. Today, I'm joined with commercial fashion and beauty retouchers, Day and Dallas, based out of LA. Guys, thanks for joining. Thank you for having Thank us, man. We're us. honored to be here. So give me the backstory. You guys have been working all over from New York down south. You guys are now based in LA and you kind of do everything. Yes, we do everything. So how did this how did this come about? How did we come about like a team? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Day, why don't you tell them how we came about as a team? I was working for a Vibe magazine in New York and um they asked me a quote for something. And I went to a friend of mine and I was like, hey, how much should I charge for this? And he was like, I don't know that stuff. He says, go ask Dallas. And I was like, who is Dallas? He was like, check my friends list, check for Dallas. And I, and I went to the friends list and I was like, hey, Dallas. How, I'm a, I'm a photo, you know, photographer, I work for this magazine. They want to know this, how much should I charge? And he was like, uh, how much do you want? And I was like, if I knew, I wouldn't be asking you. <laughs> then after that, it was just like, we were, I was following each other and talking. And one day he was like, what do you want to do? And I said, fashion photography. He's like, well, why are you doing what you're doing now? And I was like, I don't know. And then I, I started to assist him. assist him. He was like, you want to be my assistant? And I was like, yes. you know, Because he was doing a lot of album covers for rappers and stuff like that. Yeah. And so the rappers would give him these really hideous photos. And he'd have <laughs> to turn them into something. And I saw his work. So I said, I see the talent there. And it's like, how do you? How did, why would you want to do fashion, but you're working with these guys? And when I saw his fashion work, he was at the precipice. You know, when you first start shooting, shoot all your friends and stuff, and you try to shoot your friends like fashion models, it's like, <laughs> that's not going to work if you want to join this business. So I'm like, if that's what you want to do, I'll teach you what I know. And, and the rest is history. That's it. Yeah. We so who's the So who's the better photographer now? Is it still... Who's the okay. better? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. I think we we both bring something to the table that's completely different. Like we we both have um, a crazy. Whenever we do a shoot, we shoot simultaneously. You know, pass the camera back and forth. And when you get the overall look of the images, it all makes sense together. But we bring certain things to a shoot that I probably wouldn't do by myself, but he wouldn't do by himself. So it's a it's a it's it's a I wouldn't say it's equal. I wouldn't say it's one's better than the other. Um, we both have our strengths and weaknesses. Since he's a heck of a lot younger than me, he's still in the dream stage. <laughs> the Tim Walker of the group. And so he comes up with these elaborate stories that he really wants to do. And then he'll give it to me and I'll put it together in logistics. Mm -hmm. Like for example, he wanted he did a, a photo shoot called Jane. And one of the scenes is the model is putting her victim into a, a trunk of a car. So I'm like, how are you going to do that? He said, we're going to park the car in the street and we're going to shoot in the street. <laughs> I'm like, that's not going to work like that. So I said, let's work out the logistics. If we use our parking lot yeah. and you angle your camera properly, you won't even see that you're in a parking lot. So it's those yeah. things. So he wants to fly. And then it's my job to say, OK, we're going to fly. But how can we make this happen? <laughs> so. So it's when like, a client hires you guys, they're getting you both no matter what. It's not one or the other. It's both no it's matter both what. Of us. Yeah, no matter what. It's, it's a just duo. the difference is who's spearheading the project. Because yes. if they contact me, I got the lead. If they contact him, he has the lead. Yes. Or if, say, for instance, if I have the lead, but uh, the client is connecting to Dallas and really like how he commands something, I'll you do it. Because... At this point, it's about the client. It's not about either one of us. We don't take that personal. It's more like, let's who's the best person to get the job done? Right. If you're connected more to him, then I'm like, this is perfect. And ego out the window. Out the window. Yeah. But as long as the nice. job's done, and as long as so you know, from the production side, so you guys are producing it, you guys are the photographer, and then also retoucher. You guys are doing yes. all of your retouching as well in post. Retouching as well. Absolutely. Yes. Every project, 99% of the time, we're retouching our own work. Um, the only 1% of the time, say, for instance, if we have a client that have a, a huge load and they're like, we need these images by tomorrow. And I know for a fact, I can't get all that done. Or, they have, their own, or they have their own retouching department. Or they have their own retouching department. We'll, you know, release it. We're not, um, we're not those people who can't release raw photos and say, oh, oh no. no, we have to do all the retouching. No, no, no. no. I, we prefer that if you have a good retouching house, 
Do it, go. do it. I think with with us, uh, with me, I like to do the retouch sometimes, most times, because you can see everything through. So it's sometimes I have an idea and I tell you, I see this, and you'll say, uh, uh-huh. and I'll say, okay. Then like, we'll shoot it. Then I'll retouch. You say, oh, I see what you're talking about. And I like for the idea to go through completely. From so start to finish. Yes. Start to finish. So you can see. And what we also do is if he sees any um, star pupils in his courses, mm-hmm. we'll end up hiring them. Yes. Because they understand our retouching style. Yes. So that's the. Yeah. That's all yeah. yeah. I love the I love that you guys give away and you're not uh, you're not I would say too, too particular about your raw files. I know like the one way to get a photographer a retoucher worked up is is to ask them to like release the raw files and let someone else you know do it. Wait, I remember like, in the early days of Pro Edu when I was like trying to come up with like why are we going to be different? It was like we have to give away the raw files. And I remember photographers even still to this day like some won't work with us because it's like I'm not giving my raw files in the in the course and it's like well how are people going to learn you know like not everyone can just like go reshoot it some people need to start with your files and work alongside you to to get those same results it's not that they're copying you so I love that I love that you guys are giving that away I'm one of my uh one of my sayings is be proud of your before shots a lot of photographers aren't proud of their work, so they hide behind the retouch. And my job is, you're a photographer, so stand on the photograph itself, not the retouch. Yeah. Because when the client's hiring you, they're seeing the final product. But we've been we've been in shoots, and our re, our before shots aren't much different no. than our after shots. Another interesting thing too is. Um, when we're working for magazines, nine times out of ten, we don't we don't have any control of the retouch. Like they literally take the photos from there, and that's it. So sometimes when you work with magazines, they take the photos and retouch, and you know it is what it is. So you have to make sure you get it in camera. But our own particular projects that we do for ourselves, we handle all the retouch. Yes, I love that. And day you teach retouching, so I had a question about how do you see Photoshop changing in terms of like the future in the next few years of like your, you know, your retouching skills, right? You know what? I think Photoshop is, is creating, it's making things easier, but it's also making people a little bit lazier. And that's the part that always, I'm a little bit sketchy when it comes down to that. Um, these new things. Oh, check this filter, do this. And, and I know every photographer isn't a retoucher and it's great for, those who aren't, but those who are retouches, I don't want to take their job away. And I, and on top of that, uh, the program, the AI, it it can't predict exactly what you see. So it's it's very interesting watching Photoshop build and turn into this new thing. And I'm and when you take my course, I go back to the basics and I say this is this is this this is that. Just in case you come to to something that you can't get around, because nine out of ten, Photoshop and hair is weird. Um, it's a bunch of new things that I love. Don't get me wrong. I love it. It's making it easier. The selection tools are easier. The AI, uh, some of the AI tools are, are, it's incredible, but I am basic. Like if you see me retouch, it is very basic, but it looks beautiful in the end. And I don't know. Yeah. I, I think one of the problems we're having, and this is just te- technology, both on the hardware side and the software side is the new sentences. All you have to do is, Oh yeah. Uh, and what begins to happen is, People take what artists as photographers and retouchers, they tend to belittle what we do because now all I have to do is just order Photoshop. I click three buttons and I got a masterpiece. And it's like, no, it's not quite that way. So that's what the mindset is. So people are buying Photoshop, they're clicking a few buttons and they're thinking that they're doing something. And it still takes the artist being behind the tablet in order for something to, in order for that artwork to be created. It's more than just clicking a few buttons. Same thing with photography. All these cameras coming out are essentially doing all the work for us. So people are buying cameras and they're saying, and so we're losing work. So they say, I don't need you. I can just buy a camera or I can just use my iPhone and run it through some AI app and boom, I'm just as good as you. It's like, I've been at this for 30 plus years. (laughs) You'll never be there, you know? 
and, and, and on top of that, just thinking about like artists, Amy Dresser is a retoucher. She's phenomenal. Critique is a, a, it's an incredible retoucher. And think about how how many years they come up with, how many years that we have to study and learn different techniques and learn new things. Um, so I don't want to take away from uh, us artists and, and learning new techniques. And I like Photoshop. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's my world. But some of the tools are just like, ugh, it, you know, I can't explain it. Some stuff starts to look the same. Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. I, I'm... I'm just a dude, <laughs> just an opinion, you know? Yeah. No, I mean, yes, there's a lot of similarities in styles and it's, I mean, today it's so hard to, to come up with your own unique style, whether it's in retouching or photography. So do you guys think there's styles, you know, still out there that we haven't seen yet? Absolutely. There's a ton of, uh, oh my God, there's a ton of artists that I follow just because I'm, I'm a forever learning. I want to learn everything. I want to see everything. Um, photographers, of course, there are tons of new photographers that are incredible and they're retouches. They use, I love that they tag their retouches and a lot of the retouches are a part of the team. Uh, Ahmad and Dante have their own retoucher. There's a, another duo photography group out of Atlanta. Out of Atlanta. Um, who am I thinking of? I love their work. Um, it's leaving me, but it's another one. It's, they have retouches that, that basically is tied into the work. Like we know Amy Dresser was tied into Jill Greenberg's Jill work. So it's, and they're still there and they do incredible things and new things that we have yet to see. So yeah, they're out there. It's, it's you know, the retouch and, and photography was, is heavily saturated, but there are ones who are to me standouts like, oh, that's, I've never seen that before. That's incredible. I think what's gonna eventually happen is what a lot of photographers are doing, they're playing in the world of AI. And unfortunately, a lot of the AI work is looking visually better than their own photography. So it's almost like the photographers are have to catch up with the quality of their work to match that of AI. And I feel that's what they're going to start doing because I'll see somebody produce a photograph and then I'll see something stunning in their, uh, in their Instagram play. And it's like, wow, what did you do here? And you go down the feed and realize it's it was AI. AI. Yeah. And it's like, and then if, if you're a really good photographer, it makes you go, you know you can do that with your camera. That doesn't have to be an AI thing. So I think what's going to begin to happen is the photographer, the photographers are going to have to up their game to match their AI artistry. Because what's happening is clients are looking at, and, and, and it's a really bad thing, the clients are looking at these AI AI images and say, I want that. And it's like, that's AI. Literally had a client with a mood board. They had created a mood board. And I was so impressed, like, oh my God, this client created a mood board. And she's like, yeah, I use AI. And I was like, oh, okay. And all the images, I was like, we can't get that. We can't get that. Because where we were, and we were shooting in the studio, and she had us in like an office somewhere. And I was like, mm -mm. this had to be shot differently. <laughs> and But it was, it's... So maybe that's what's going to happen now. We're going to have to dust off the laziness of the photographers today. And if you want to big game, you're going to, and you start, start trying to match the AI photos and that's going to be some work. Interesting. Yeah. So, you know, with things like wedding photography, event photography, headshot, photo well, kind of headshot photography, those things are pretty much safe from AI, but with commercial and even like fashion, yeah. does the person really have to be real? I think that's a really interesting you know, topic, like does a gap model or does a fashion model actually have to be real? If, if we get to the point where it's very easy to take real clothes, model them on fake people and have infinite variations, why do we need to hire a, a portrait photographer and retouching and that's team? The mindset so that's, much? that's the mindset that's happening. And it's sad because AI is making a lot of people lose work. Like models are losing work. And another thing that gets me is when, I, when I'm when i drawn to an AI image, I'm actually drawn to the subject and the subjects tend to be stunning. And then I'm finding myself trying to find that model and go, oh my God, that model doesn't exist. Yeah. And, and, it, and the funny thing about it is, is, see, I can go to AI and create that model that I see in these images, but I want to connect with the model. I want to shoot yeah. the model. It's more than just having a, a stunning 
a stunning subject with great features and great symmetry, but there's a connection and that's what's missing. There's a connection between the model and the photographer to create that magic. The difference between a good photo and a great photo is for that 1 25th of a second, the model and the photographer fell in love for that one split second. That's why when you look at somebody like Naomi Campbell, Naomi Campbell's arguably one of the best models we've ever had. There's sometimes she does her job and the photos are good. And then there's sometimes she does her job and you go, oh my God. Like what happened here? What happened here? Yeah. The difference between those two photographs is her and the photographer fell in love for that one moment. And you I can, like how you put that. Yeah. That's get, what it is. If you listen to the interviews with some of the photographers and the models, they'll tell you, oh my God, I love Peter Limber. He called us all together. We'll do anything for Peter. And then you see these photos and they're iconic photos. And then you see her, uh, she did a shoot and I was like, you know, this isn't, this is okay. And then you see the behind the scenes and, and oh, it was, it was. You can see the magic's not there. Yeah, it wasn't there. Yeah. So that's, and that's the intangibles that we have as artists. Yeah. Because we're drawn to the beauty of the person, but you want to connect with them. There's been times I've sat in studios and like, oh my God, I'm dying to shoot this person. And we just didn't have a connection. I got the job done. Yeah. The photos, no. don't get me wrong. The photos would be good. It's just those photos that are like stunning. You like, but we, we can go oh. through anybody's feed and we can tell if you that love photographer them, loved love that model. Yeah. You, <laughs> you can, can tell. tell. Yeah. It's different. It's just, it's a different doing. feeling to the images. Yeah. I can tell each time, like you, you was doing your job here. My adage is this, my use this when I talk with models, I say to me, a photo shoot's like a bout of lovemaking. It's my job to make you feel sexy, sad, angry, happy. It's your job as the model to convey that back to me. The better our lovemaking, the better our babies are, and the babies are the photos. So I want beautiful. I want beautiful babies, no matter yeah. what. So no matter <laughs> what. Who, who wants an ugly baby? You name it. <laughs> who wants an ugly baby? <laughs> exactly. So that's my. That's how I always approach the photography realm. I want to fall in love with my subject just for that moment. Yeah, because any longer that might be weird, you know. Yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> you get one moment, and then. Exactly. <laughs> so there's a middle ground, right? I've been having this ongoing conversation with Eric Almas, who has just actually published uh, an article on Petapixel. He's been taking, so he's still using real people, but he is building these crazy environments that would normally like, you know, be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And like, that was his, that was his, his, our entire tutorial with him shows you how to composite real people into crazy spaces. And he'll often you know, Photoshop several different spaces and several different things together to create this surreal environment that is this like really weird millimeter of a, of a background. And he's now taking advantage of AI and creating these incredible environments and then using composition to complement. So have you guys started doing that in your work and create like really cool, like, you know, uh, environments, props, uh, that sort of thing? Not necessarily. I funny. I, before prior to AI, I used to do the same thing um, for different like rappers and things like that, or create these worlds, and again, compositing a bunch of things, put them together. But in our personal work, because it's beauty and fashion, it's not necessarily. It's not something that we actually do on the the daily. But not saying I'm against it. Um, I got some pretty interesting ideas and I'm like, okay, I need that and I can't shoot that. So I'm gonna see if I can get some AI to do exist, it or it doesn't, or it doesn't exist. exist. So I'm gonna see if I can do it. Yeah, but I'm not against it, but we haven't done it as of yet. Everything has been um, straightforward, you know, still to what you call it, um, suits and nuts. <laughs> straightforward uh, photography, fashion photography, beauty photography, yeah, no. Not yet. So not the yet. answer to the question is not yet. To be it, sounds like we, it sounds like we need to do it. Absolutely. I'll provide you guys with a crazy challenge and then we'll see if we can put it together. Oh, definitely. We'll rise to the challenge. Challenge. Challenge and, since you, and since you teach live day, we'll have to do the whole thing live. Okay. I He'll no work it out. That. I'll get in logistics and then we're all yours. <laughs> yes. All right. Sounds like we're going to have to set a date and okay. see how this whole thing unfolds live. That'd be really cool. To you can do that. You can definitely do that. Because it's even teaching uh 
understanding of things have become so easy with regards to AI. Like we'll look at photos that were done composite wise or AI and you look at the light and you're like, the light, it would never be that way. You know, the, oh yeah. So I, I look at a bunch of comps and I'm like, that's not. And that's a composite That's shot. incorrect. Because I can, I can look at the AI and where the light is falling. I'm like, and where they lit the person, that is not correct. So sometimes when you look at stuff, it's like, oh, it's, oh something's wrong. What's, what's wrong and and <laughs> being a photographer, you're looking at a photo that you want to like, but you can't quite put your finger with something. Not that it's bad. It's, it's not bad. It's just something is weird about this. Exactly. <laughs> what is it? Like subconsciously, you know, like how light works, even if you can't explain it. So if you right. see something that, you know, a, a creative director is like, you know, come together and the perspective's off and maybe there's two horizons, yeah. you're That's like, why does that look weird? So if you don't have like a, a, a an artist background, yeah. you can't really explain it. So, you know, for yeah. all the photographers now, like making really cool stuff, you know, they, you really still need to have this foundational knowledge of like how art works and yes. why you like stuff and like to yes. be able to talk about it. Otherwise... You're not going to make it very far in this industry. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Or just do it so you can see your photos won't look weird. Or unless you want it to look weird. Unless you want it to look unless that way. Unless it's intentionally that way. And I'm like, okay, this may work. Because I've seen work on purpose that looks, they, they play around with perspective. But again, that comes from knowing. You have to know, you know already. So it's, it's like just, David LaChapelle, like super yeah, weird. Perfect example. That's, that's perfect. what he wanted. Yes. And Tim Walker is also a Tim really Walker's weird another Yeah. Yeah. So we've talked about a lot of influences, but I want to go further. Like you guys seem like you have a, a, a very strong amount of influences in this industry. So who are the people that like have really in, impacted your work in Dallas? We'll start with you since you've been around a little longer, like coming up, who are the people you like fell in love with? And you're like, Oh, this is like the goat of photography. I'm really straightforward and real simple with my work. It will be people like, Bruce, uh, Bruce Weber, it would be um, Patrick de Mercier, it would be Peter Lindbergh, and above all of that, Herb Brits. Yeah, love and, that. Um, I didn't even realize when I when I I never realized that photography can be a vocation. And high school, I was a kid. I always had a camera in high school, and I went to a performing arts high school. I went to the Fame School in New York, and a friend of mine said she needed photos. She needed head actors headshots for her agent. And she says, I'll, if they're good, I'll pay you for it. I'm like, pay me? You pay to get photos done? Mm -hmm. So I took the photographs. The agent loved them and then started sending me clients. And now I'm looking at anything that's a photograph like, oh, my God, they got paid to do this. They got paid to do these billboards and these album covers and these magazine things. It would, it, it blew my mind away so then i started looking because back in the days we didn't know who the photographers were not like today so i had to start doing the research of who i liked and why i liked them and her bridge always rose to the top for me um i'm a huge fan of stephen klein huge fan of merton marcus uh stephen mizell the ones he named already. We have a ton of books. Urban Penn and Richard Avedon. <laughs> Avedon and Martin I, Marcus. I, I named him. Like between the two of us, I'm heavily into the black and white. We're days heavily into the color. Yes. And I like drama. I keep the drama in my photos and not my life. So Miles I like Aldridge. I love Miles Aldridge. That's another one. I love when photographers um have a point of view, meaning you can tell that Peter Lindbergh's from Germany. He's in his work. You can tell um, Burton Marcus' love for, for color. And, and, and I don't know. I just like artists. I like when somebody have a perspective that's, that's not mine. I can see. I can come into your world. That's how I look at photographers. I, I'm able to walk into your world and be like, hmm, this is interesting. I love this. And it inspires me a lot. So, And mine is I, and mine is, I like a visual signature. I like to be able to walk anywhere and go, that's her Brits. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's Bruce Weber. Mm -hmm. That's Merton Marcus. I, I like to I like the the consistency that a person produces at any given time. However, the work isn't samey. Yeah. 
because there's some photographers who produce work and it's like no matter what they do the only difference is the subject matter and after you see the work the first time oh this is really great and then five years down the line it's still the same photograph not that there's a visual signature to all the artists that we talked about but all the work isn't the same yeah 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 and you know you've mentioned a lot of people and Mer merton marcus were they maybe the first duo and was that maybe like an inspiration for you guys to kind of like try to team up i'd want to give it to marcus clinko marcus clinko and Indrani. Indrani, i would give it to them okay. yeah um the connection between us is we're always together yeah all the time and what would happen is even before we decided to become a duo they would say dallas look at it from this side for a second yeah and i'll go over there and i won't see what he sees so i'll just say take the, the shot. camera yeah i don't see what you see and he'll take the shot and i go oh Wow, yeah. say bad word. Like, <laughs> oh wow. So that's how we end up becoming that way. And so Dave will go through my photos and say, let me retouch this photo for a second. I want to show you a different color grading. Yeah. I will look a little bit different. Or it was always a collaborative thing, even when I was his assistant, because I was his assistant for many years. It was always a what do you think? How would you do this? Or I ask him, like, should I do it like this? And then he, or he'll say boo over here. And I just like because I can't see what you see and I won't look at it that way. So instead of me shooting and shooting, trying to see what you have in your mind, take the camera and just shoot what you have in your mind. So it was quite organic how that happened. Yeah. And it's funny, a lot of people will see our work before they got to know us and they'll say, oh, you guys shoot just alike. It's like, no, no we, we don't. don't. <laughs> we can be on the same shoot and we don't shoot alike. But when you start all. putting the photos side by side from the same shoot, you, can see. you go, oh, I see the you difference see, now. Yeah. So we can flip through our photos and I said, oh, I started shooting here yep. immediately. You, just, you had to say anything like that's Dallas because it looks like it's, it's a different it's film. It's, it's a different eye. But Merton Marcus wasn't the, uh, is an influence? Absolutely. But no, the duo, it, it came organically. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he would have shoots and I'm like, where's they? And he'd be like, oh, such such acts for you. And I'm like, oh, okay. And, and vice versa. So of course <laughs> but yeah it was it was just how it just it worked out it made sense i love that so i think we're at a point let's get into your guys's work can i pull up your guys's instagram and uh and share from there we're here for you who do you want to start with day what right. <laughs> <laughs> what do i have up there? all right okay we can right. see it Sweet. So everyone go follow Day. And Please, I've been please. starting with the very first photo with basically everyone. So following this format, what happened here? What's this What's this about? We we were shooting for Vanity Fair Italia. Italy? Yeah, Italy. Yeah, and um, we were shooting, what's his, Ron? His name is Ron Finley, Finley. and he is a botanist, for lack of a better word, based out of Los Angeles. And he's the... He's the, not ghetto, that's not the term. He's the, the, urban, urban, he's the urban botanist. Yeah. And what happens oh, yeah. is he um, he takes the environment of new, of, his, of his city and he teaches you how to bring greenery back. Yeah, he's so, got a master class, right? Yes. Yes. yes, yes. Yeah. So I watched that. Shoot him for, uh, for Vanity Fair and it was an incredible job. We had a great time. There's tons of laughs and... Um, tons of color and it was just interesting we had a great time i love that photo of him because it was so honest like it was a real laugh that wasn't uh oh laugh it wasn't a smile we were talking about something and i think one of us made and that can joke. be i can be incredibly inappropriate absolutely i'm in the generation of archie bunker so yeah. i can be incredibly inappropriate so he probably said something, said something inappropriate and he and cracked he up and i snapped the shot and i was i was just happy like this is a beautiful photo and we were we were channeling our inner uh, Annie Lee boards. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah, yep. I mean, she's pretty synonymous with Vanity Fair. So, yes. is Vanity Fair kind of like the pinnacle of you know your guys's goals to shoot for, or is there other magazines and portrait, oh. portrait, portrait wise, portrait wise, Vanity, Vanity Fair, Fair, fashion, uh, any any foreign Vogue, yeah, Vogue and V uh, Magazine, V Magazine, New W Moreau. Magazine for me too, because I'm Moreau, L. L. Yeah. So, yeah. Love it. All right. Well, so we'll go through all your penned ones. So you have three penned ones. So yeah. 
This, this was, was important that it stays there. So what does this one mean to you? This was an actual test shot. We were, I was shooting a series. I, I did, slipped up on some new light and that I love. And um, Cody was the model. And Dallas had a bunch of fabric. And he was like, oh, let's test it. Let's test this thing on her. And I was like, I didn't want to do it because one, it was his fabric and it was his idea and it was everything. And I was like, ah, I really don't want to do it because this is your thing right now. And so I was like, you know what? Let's just, just take a couple of shots. I literally took three shots of her and all three were stunning. And Dallas is actually holding the fabric. And I just looked at this photo and I loved it. And I thought it was, I don't know. It just, something about this image, it just reminds me of just, ah. <laughs> you know what's it's what's funny about this? He doesn't talk about his work. And not at all. <laughs> so I forced him to talk about his work. So not I'm glad I'm all. glad you're doing this <laughs> because most of the work I see, I'm there with him. So I know the yeah. backstory. So to someone who doesn't know anything about it, ask him, it puts him on the spot. Yeah. Do you have that thing called imposter syndrome that most photographers no, have? I don't think it's imposter syndrome. It's just more like it's very weird to sit here and talk about yourself. <laughs> it's weird to yeah, most creatives don't like doing it. That's why they're behind the camera. Yeah, um, did seen. this shot. I, I'm so proud of this shot. It was my business card for many, 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 many years. Um, she at the time she was 17, just came to New York. She just got signed that day to I think Wilhelmina, and I got a call and, and they were saying, "Hey, we have this model, love to work on." I said, "Okay, cool." And we went to the studio. This is before the optical snoot and all that stuff and she was young and a lot of photos was she was smiling and stuff and I was like no they want you to do some beauty work let's get some beauty let's bring some sensualness to the image and um I had the light set up and then her mom said talk about her boyfriend I was like what's his name she was like Michael and I said okay cool so I had the camera and composed the shot and so I said her name is Taylor I said Taylor so can you tell me about Michael she started to laugh and she was like Michael took the shot that was it i was like i got it <laughs> i got Tricked it you. trick bagged you got it. that's it okay. yeah so that was it oh body work <laughs> so yeah the, the framing I, I i did a test shoot with my guy dave crew he's over he writes for petapixel and i know dave crew that yeah. is that's my family that's my brother i love him so yeah. Dave was doing a shoot and um, he wanted to do something portraity and and he needed a model. And I said, okay, um, I need a model. And he, this guy always wanted to work with me and I and we never actually did it because of COVID and everything happened. He was like, oh, I have a lot of work with you. I was like, okay, look, me and, my, me and my boy, we both did this together. And we came in and we shot him and Dave did the, the portrait side. And I was like, hey, let me shoot you like a model. And I had all those things <laughs> sitting around the hat the gloves, the gloves I had for years I never used. And I was like, I'm just gonna bring it. It may work, it may not work. And I just did a bunch of whatever with it. <laughs> and are you just adding the Kodak Porter? Oh, actually... that's definitely fake. All that stuff is fake. Cause I was talking yeah. to a friend, he was like, you know, Kodak uh, portraiture is, is color. I say, I absolutely yeah. know that it's color. I'm not, you know. I'm just going I'm for not... the look, nice. Just going for the look. Well, the lighting's fantastic. I'm Thank sure he you. was. I'm sure he was pumped to have these. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It was. It was one of those. We, it was a. What do I call it? Like a, a test day. It was a test shoot. We were just messing around. It was all about Dave did that day. Yeah. And Dave paid the model with photos. Yeah. It was about Dave, and I was like, okay, so let me shoot some model stuff for you because he didn't have he didn't much have any model, model stuff. stuff so. And I was like, so let me shoot some model photos for you and and have some fun and. And we were just playing around with a bunch of like different lighting. And Dave was looking at me <laughs> like, wow, that's what you do? I'm like, it's very simple. He was like, I don't really thought about doing it this way. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, the human form, you know, there's a big difference of shooting male and female. So yeah. how do you light and how do you approach a male versus a female differently? Uh, with with women, with my with women, I like to shoot women so strong. I like shooting women strong. Lighting wise, uh, do I approach them differently? I don't think I approach them much differently. No. Okay. I, I keep it the same. It's a trick question. Like, you guys almost fell for it. I like that. 
<laughs> like, I don't necessarily think I, I shoot them, you know, any differently. That I don't, was I don't have these photos. Well, yes, you do. Hmm. You got you seen something for the first time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that, I know him. I know you guys know Brian. What? That is yes. family. Yeah, yes. Doc and his family. Uh yeah, I love I love Brian. That is that is that was our introduction to Dave. Yeah, Dave, yes. Nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I met you know David Crew and uh, Brian back when I was working with Aaron at Flern, like way long time ago. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't have <laughs> this was a this was a, a editorial we did during COVID. This is done. This is a long time ago. It just got released, um, and at that we we did this. It was a long. Time it was ago. before, so it had to be twenty twenty. No, it was like twenty. It was during COVID. It was during twenty twenty. Twenty twenty COVID. Because we were we were masked the, the heck up. All right, what's the shoot? That one was the big hair shoot. We had this hair. Everything came together literally forty eight hours. Before, yeah. yeah, we were shooting. Uh, I got the models, and I wanted to do this really big hair story, and uh, I called the hairstylist. I was like, I want to do this thing. And then the makeup artist was like, okay, we can do this. And everybody, they're all artists. And I love how uh, Shelly works. I love how uh, Joseph works. They're very much like, let me see what you have in your mind. Okay, let me give my my take on it. Interpretation of what and you And so want. I love working with them. We got the models together, called Neiman up. And he gave us the outfits. And we said, we're going to have fun. And we used Dave's space. And we used Dave's space. Dave was there. He actually shot. He We, we made Dave shoot, too, because usually he's like, oh, I'll shoot BTS. Like, no. If you're going to be on set with us, you're, you're going, going to, to shoot. shoot. You're right. going to shoot. So we had to Dave the camera. And... um he was shooting. He was like, "Wow, you guys! The way you guys do this is so interesting." <laughs> so we trying to we trying to convert Dave to have him come do some fashion work with us. So yeah, I love that. And is this their real hair? Or are they wearing? Oh no, not at all. Okay. If you saw the model on the bottom, um, she looks. She has nothing. bone straight blonde, <laughs> blonde hair. hair. She looks nothing like that. Almost like Gwyneth Paltrow hair. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you gotta now love the good top hair. Model, the top model, some of that hair is hers, and then they just build on top of it. Yeah, if you go to the the what do you call it? The the shot next to that one, the little pink when she by herself. This uh, one? Yeah. You can see what's her hair and what's not. No, you can't. Well, yeah. some of it. You really can't. Yeah, you shouldn't so, be able to if the retouch is yeah. <laughs> you know, oh man. You ever walked into a trap. <laughs> Yeah, we don't approach things. I'm thinking oh, wow. about like the what? Lighting. This looks pretty awesome. Thank you. Thank Look you. at this hair. Oh, sign me yeah. up for that. So we had Shelly again. Shelly same Rosie, hairstylist. Same hairstylist. She's incredible. She does a lot of work for uh, like the big brands. She did work with Prada and Louis Vuitton and Tom Ford. Tom Ford. She works. She works and. One of our she favorite does all the major, She does all the major Fashion Week, New York Fashion Week shoots, um, uh, fashion shows. And she's very, very, I can't explain it. She's artsy. She comes in, what are we doing? And I'm uh, like, we need something that's different. Hair, again, a lot of hair. That is, I mean, is this all custom made for the shoot or just pieced together? A little bit of both. Yeah, so what happens whenever, whenever we do these shoots, it, the stylist, everybody is an artist, and we like to respect our artists. So, uh, and we don't want them going to Ross. We don't want them going to Coles. Yeah, we need them to bring their A game. Yeah. So yeah. this one, we had Lisa doing the styling, and she came and she brought all of these things. And we was like, okay, how can we make this work? <laughs> Put this together. She styled the, the heck out of it, and we just were playing around, moving things around to make just make a story where uh, things are interesting. Things look. Just, we like things to look interesting, like things to feel interesting. And and we want them to feel memorable. Yeah. You don't just want to take photos for taking photos or, you know, we not, it wasn't about the lighting. It wasn't about the space. It wasn't about anything else. It was it was about the, the moment. And the moment. And yeah. The, yeah. 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 Love that. Cynthia Bailey. All right. So let's go down and maybe just t tell me where to go next. What did, 
Is there a shoot that stands out that you want to go shoot over? Stands out that I, okay, go go here. Scroll down a little bit. I see who we got. A lot of dudes because dudes don't require makeup. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, we can we can do that one. Yes, let's go to her. Um, this one. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we love this actress. Love her. And um, do you know who? Do you know who she is? I don't. But also, I'm looking at a screen that's a little far away. So go to the next photo. Uh, to the one to the right. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see further, further back. back. Um. <laughs> There was a show. You ever saw the show 24 Hours with uh, Kiefer Sutherland? Was that with Kiefer Sutherland? Yes. Uh, yeah, I saw a few episodes. She was she was an actress on that show. She has a really deep, sultry voice. It's okay, almost like yeah. she yep. speaks like a tenor. And she always plays the Middle Eastern characters and all that stuff. Yeah, okay. That's her. That. Soraya. So a friend of ours had posted a photo with her, and I was like, I would love to shoot her. She's like, really? We can set that up. And I was like, are you are you serious? I'm like, yeah. So um, on that day, we went to our, our home and um, we had a friend of ours do the makeup and the hair and she had her outfits already. And so she's like, where do you want me? And I was like, okay, let's figure this out. And um, Dallas and I do this thing sometimes. Whenever we're shooting portraits of people, we like to do things that look, we like the Vanity Fair portraits. We like the Vanity we love Fair. that look. Um, and so we were in her home, literally light was coming through. I thought it was stunning. And then we, and we lit her so it can look just as natural and took the photos. It looked like it's, it's not lit, it's, it's lit. And, um, she took the photos and she was so happy, so happy. She was like, these photos are stunning. I love them. We had a great time shooting those. I don't know. I thought it was stunning. Now it's yeah. funny because the only when you made the comment about shooting male versus female, we don't play in that arena like that. But when we do portrait versus fashion, fashion. oh, those that's things are whole, We have a whole. We, yeah. It's almost like you're working with the left brain versus the right brain. Yeah. So when yeah. we're doing portrait work, we want to do environmental portraits. So we we look into the the space we're in, mm -hmm. and we say, okay, because the space is now a character. So we have to respect the space. Mm -hmm. So we yep. we'll shoot the space first until we get it exactly, exactly how we want it, lightwise, and yep. then we bring in the subject and we light the subject to be congruent to the space. Yeah. When we shoot so, the models, it's like boom, it's about the model. Yeah, model. That's it. It's about the model. I don't care what anything else. What, what anything else is model. Space so, second. So the lighting on this one, how long did it take to light, and how many lights are you using? Because it looks uh, like, I mean, you lit it in a way to make it look like there's no lights and it's just natural yes. lights. It's too... So to the right of her is a giant window and she had a yeah. uh, diffused fabric yeah. over the window. But on top... On, on top was open, as you can see behind yeah. her, the tree lights, uh, the tree shadows falling into the space. So one of the things we learned from Annie L when she did a master class was um, when I put light into the, into the space, I put it in the same direction in which the natural light is with the ambient light. So we place the ambient, we place the artificial light at the same angle as the ambient light and then blended them. Yep. Nice. And so is your light creating the shadow? Which shadow? No, that's actually that's outside. Actually, that's that's actually outside. Yeah, that's, that's natural. Okay, that's natural. Okay. Yes. So nice. it was it was keeping things as natural as possible and just filling in the shadows to make things look not like natural light. So whenever yeah. we're figuring this stuff out, we use the phrase, this looks a little too stroby. Yeah, it looks stroby. Less stroby. We want it less stroby. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Less stroby. And it looks like you guys are using, shooting on Hasselblad with a phase back. Yes. That's that's our, um, right now, that's our go-to because we, we're going to, we have, we love cameras. We love lighting more than cameras, but we we both have the five. We got five D Mark Twos, and he was like, and he was going to get the we going to the five D Mark Fours, and mm -hmm. then I was like, we might as well go mirrorless because it's it's changed. That's the way of the world now, and um, we're going to do it, but we have to. It's a whole ecosystem, so we need new cameras, need new lenses. Need, it's like this is a lot, so. We the thing that hasn't changed was our media format. We love our media formats. Um, 
And I like the combination of the phase one back against the House of Blood body. Yes. So yeah, it's just that's something magic. you don't. I, I saw that a lot when I was working in commercial, but I think for a lot of our audience and for the people probably watching, they have no idea what that is. So <laughs> why? That's like that's like combining like Canon and Nikon and like putting it together. Like yeah, okay, that's, that's, right. that's a good analogy. Right. So like analogy. why 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 do that and how did that come about? Oh, um, before I got signed with my agent, I used to shoot with the Mamiya RZ67. And I had a phase one back on there as well. And um, he told me, if you want to play with the big dogs, you're going to have to upgrade your equipment and you're going to have to get yourself a house of blood. So I went to digital transitions and I bought the house of blood with a, with a house of blood back. And I didn't like the feel of the photos. The phase one produced a different type of photo for me. So, yeah. Um, I asked them, is it, and I and I didn't like the feel of the Phase One camera because to me at the time, it felt like a souped up um, 35 millimeter. So they said, well, you know, we have the combination of the Hasselblad body with the Phase One back. I said, let me give that a try. So they they rented it to me for a week, and I fell in love with the feel because I found that I like the Hasselblad cameras, but I like the Phase One digital back technology. Yep. Um, what begins to happen is my photos were coming out like paintings straight out of camera. Yeah. When any, when, when your photo is lit, this, this is any camera. When your photo is lit properly, you're going to get a great image. But when you have it against a 16 bit depth piece of machinery, my photos were looking like artwork coming straight out of the camera. Yeah. Was one of the All the detail. Yeah. Is it too much detail? Uh, no, not really. Um, you know what? It's not too much detail. I like, that's why we are, you know what? We are the, really tedious. The, the best answer to give you is yes. Because it's, we are tedious with how uh, things are, like hair and makeup. But, to be perfect. but what we're talking about is this. I don't like using it on normal people. Oh, yeah, no. It's too much information on a normal person. It show too much. Yeah. It, yeah, you're it right. can show too much it on a normal show person. Too much. It creates a retouching uh, way more work sometimes. Y yes, it can be. Trust me, I know. It can be. <laughs> and Trust I mean, me. the file management too. Like, you oh, can't shoot. <laughs> you can't see it right now. Yeah. I have five, yeah. six, seven, eight. Nine. I got 10 uh, hard drives. Just... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it can be. All right. He's one of my favorite actors. How did this come about? I uh, I'm, a, I'm a musician. I work with Idris for a few years, and I told Dallas I know him, and he didn't believe me. I'm like, I know him. He's like, yeah, whatever. Well, okay, <laughs> okay, I know okay what whatever. Say. So I'm like, you know, he and I think we discussed working with him. We were in New York at the time, and we talked about we were gonna move here. And I asked a friend, uh, "What will we need to be better prepared for LA?" And he was like, "You need to shoot celebrities." I'm like, "Do you know anybody?" And I was like, "I think I know like two people." And I reached out. I kept. I had all his. The two people. So let's get this together. The two people is Michael B. Jordan <laughs> and, and it's just over. Hey, so Those are great two people. I know right? exactly. I went to high school with Michael. Uh, with Michael, but Idris. I called every number, no answer. I'm like, what is going on? I emailed him, everything's bouncing back. I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. And then I just reached out on, on Instagram, like, Jerry, what's going on? He's like, dang. I'm like, I need your help. He's like, okay, cool, no problem. I need your help. And so he flew us out to London, and he had us work on a project with Super Dry. Oh, and wow. We and we did Super Dry, and we recorded. In Rankin Studio. In Rankin Studio, yeah. So I don't know what, stu what studio is that. I'm not familiar with it. Uh, just his studio. What, you, do you know who Rankin is? Uh huh. Okay. Oh, okay. That's, That's it. it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. He's a, he's uh he's one of the big dogs. Well, in he's world. a big based dog based out of London. Based out of London. Really, really cool. Really, I don't know. Rankin is. You, I'm sure you've seen his. You've work. seen his work. You've I can guarantee. You. He's he's one of those people who's been around for a really long time. Uh, you love Rankin. Rankin is cool. Yes. Nice. All right. Dallas, you're up. Yay. All right. I am Dallas J. Logan. That's your I am name. Dallas. Everyone go follow him. All right. Very first one. Ooh. I know, right? Um, this is a model I've been dying to work with for years. Um, 
everybody has their taste um, in their subject matters. And I like women that are androgynous. In the aspect of short hair, I want, I hate dealing with long hair because to me it hides features. So she had no hair in the head, but her face was still very feminine and very feline. So that's how it came about. And she just came into my studio space and she moved like water. And that was it. And it was a real, I'm really simplistic with my lighting. I'm really simplistic with my shooting. She allowed me for those free frames to fall in love with her. That's and you answer. were able to fall out of love. Yes. <laughs> oh, because I'm a whore, so I'm done with you. I want to go to the next one. <laughs> I, oh, that's one thing. I hate be shooting models. I, uh, I yeah. hate, once I'm done with you, we're done. He has that thing. <laughs> you won't, you won't <laughs> shoot him again. I, I don't, if he I don't. try not to. I try not to. <laughs> I, uh, the girl that he had in this photo with the black fabric, she's one of the few models I've worked with more than once because every time there was a casting, and she knew I was the photographer. She says, I'm coming because I know you're not going to shoot me again. So I'm going to get this job and you're going to shoot me again. So Nice. I'm, I don't have that, by the way. Yeah, I, don't, I don't have I don't, that. I don't like to be I, shoot. Um, this was done. Um, I used to work with Vincent Peters. And um, he inspired me uh, from a photo shoot he did with Christina Aguilera. And that's what's prompt, that's what's, uh, prompted these photos. Nice. I love the lighting. Thank you very much. It's in the ebook, as a matter of fact. Remember those photos? And that's the color oh, version. Is. The color version of that's the uh -huh. color version. <laughs> oh, I do have those photos. Those at least. Yeah, those are the color versions. And are the so these are the ones that you shot, but of the same. Well, not necessarily that I no, shot. No, no, we if both... he post, if he post X, if he post a particular look from a shoot, I tend not to post it. And post something different. So if I, if I post one and three five, he'll post two, four, and six. Right. Okay. Cool. Unless so it looks like you post three at a time too. You gotta yes. stay consistent. So are you like if if you were to just post two, how how much would that bother you that your feed is now all messed up? <laughs> oh, oh, it in my core, my in the deepness <laughs> of my soul, it would it would kill me. <laughs> so if you only liked two. They won't, oh, they, they, won't they won't get posted. They won't get posted. <laughs> oh, that is dedication to the feed. Keep it consistent. <laughs> I love it. All right. Do you have any uh, shoots that I'm scrolling by that you want to go over that stand out? Uh, have nothing any comes stories. To my head. Oh, look at Yusuf. Oh, there's Yusuf. <laughs> this Yusuf? Yes, that's Yusuf. That's what uh, I look like with my shirt off. So, so I, I get it. I get it. Absolutely <laughs> twins. Uh, he's a fitness model and trainer based out of New York. And, and he's uh, never eaten a carb in his life. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, you, you're right. <laughs> no cinnamon rolls ever. None. Unless <laughs> they're a protein cinnamon roll. You <laughs> showed a legendary uh, Kafaro. Who the hell? Black and no, white. Black and white. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, this is Chris Kafaro. He is an amazing content photographer yes. and celebrity photographer who was really big in the 80s, the 90s, and the 2000s. 2000s. Yeah. Um, he's famous for shooting George Michael. And George Michael was his claim to fame. And okay. all of the he all of the the pop and the rock scene. He's responsible. Any he visual just, you saw, no he doubt. He was responsible for He it. was doing all of No them. doubt. Um, yeah, anybody. It's Ice like Cube, yeah. um, Nirvana, yep. uh, Jane's Addiction. Yep. It was this guy here. So he did all of the the, the rock scene in the 90s and 2000s. And he's responsible for all those images. And he's a really good friend he's of a ours. He's a legend. He's a legend. Really good friend of ours. We went to his house and we told him. And he said him. he needed a photo because he was going on tour for something. Yeah. So he brought a real simple light setup to his house, and this is what we came up with. And he gave us hell the entire time, like, oh, oh, yeah. it's like, shut photographers up. Are the worst, <laughs> photographers are the worst subjects. He so was, uh, explain the lighting here. How much of this is in camera versus, you know, retouching with the lighting that you, you have? Oh, no, what you see is what, what you, you get, got. Yeah. Uh, I used a deep-throated octobox 
with a grid. With a grid on it. And that was it. And that was it. That's it. And that's a bounce party. One night. Wow. One night. I love it. And uh, who makes the Actabax? Oh, my God. Yeah. I don't. You know, it's funny. We don't know. Let me tell you why. Fotix. Is it? That's oh, what it is. It's Fotix Raja. All right. Let me tell you how we. What happens is this a friend of ours had it, and we call it the Carolyn. Her name was Carolyn. Her name is Carolyn. So we just call it the Carolyn. Oh, use the Carolyn. Oh, the Carolyn. Because it makes sense. But I have no idea. When it That's works, it movie. works. Yeah. It's a good mix of color and black and white. So, black and white. If it's you had to choose, white. what would it be? Ooh. If I had to choose, it'd always be black and white. Oh, I don't want to choose. I'm about the tonal qualities. Oh, this is. I'm about the tonal yeah. qualities of highlights and shadows. This was shot for Hollywood Weekly. The gentleman on the table is a celebrity stylist, and he had we had to do a photo shoot for Hollywood Weekly, and if you were to meet him, his energy is really really big. But when he got in front of the camera, he was a dud. <laughs> he was he, he just he just stood there. I'm like, you, you can't be this dude. So like, <laughs> this is not this is not going to work. So I said, can you do me a favor? Get us a model down here. And the model's gonna be your muse. And that's how that came about. That's why he doesn't know how to hold a camera. <laughs> <laughs> so that wasn't intentional. That was just him holding the camera that way. That's just him holding the camera. Because it. it was so hard to tell him, just do this, just look through the viewfinder. He was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, so this I can see it. how this is gonna go. This is it. <laughs> so that's hilarious. This right. is a sample of my lighting diagram of my book, Light is Light, of nice. lighting diagrams. So this your is book, Light is Light, how long has it been out? And where do we get it? Over 10 years. Yeah. It's on my website, dallashaylogan.com forward slash ebook. What happens is the book, it was The book is a constant evolution. Yeah, constant evolution. So whenever we shoot, literally, we'll have a shoot in Dallas and say, step back and take a photo of... Uh, the setup, and we'll take a photo of the setup, like we add this to the book, try to do different things with lighting, try to do different um, different techniques with lighting so we can show people what we do, how we do it, and try not to make the light so... So the book is updated every three or four years, Yeah, depending on how busy my schedule is. And how, so. busy the sh yeah, how busy the shooting is, and we always try to try stuff, try new stuff, do new things. And that's the girl right there. That was the girl who day shot with the black with the black fabric. That's her. Mm -hmm. This is a project. Oh, okay, yeah. For, this is a project for Essence, Essence. Magazine. Yeah. So whenever I have a job and she can get on it, she will do her damnedest to get on the job. I love it. And so this is this has over 100 lighting diagrams in it? Yes. Oh, I love that. Over 100? It's, it's a lot. lot. It's even a lot more than that. <laughs> it's going to be like lot. 150 now. It is a lot. And it covers beauty, commercial beauty, editorial beauty, commercial fashion, editorial fashion, portraiture lighting, as well as body lighting. Nice. I love that. Thank you. So when is the next uh, workshop that you guys have are doing? The next workshop I have coming up, I'm doing a retouch. Um, thank you for looking at our photos. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. They're beautiful. Thank, thank you, you very thank much. You. I'm doing a retouch. Um, class where I'm going to be teaching skin and some color grading. Uh, I always teach skin because it's the basic. We like things to look natural. We like things to look like it's not. I love when I have a client and I, and I give them their photos and they say, it looked like you didn't do anything. And I'm like, did you like to see it before? <laughs> but I love uh, making things look natural. And I've noticed online that a lot of photographers, I love frequency separation, but they use it in which a way it makes the photos look kind of, the skin looks really weird. You get that basketball skin or it looks done. So I teach, I'm not going to, it's not even really, I teach the basics. I teach the basics. I take them back to what it is to retouch. Teach them how easy it is to to retouch. Because uh, everybody have this thing like, it's going to take me hours. It's like, it's not. If you learn what to look for, what to fix, and I take them through the my, my my steps 
my workflow, teach them basic things, how to do things, how to make things look natural. And let, let me break it down a little bit more. Yeah, because he does people. He does people doesn't. People don't understand the the signature the signature style of retouching versus retouching itself. So sometimes when people look at photographs, they're like, "I want my photograph to look like that," because they're looking at the retouching style of the photograph. Yeah. Or they'll say to me, "Make my photo look like yours." I'm like. Retouching for us starts start in the studio. studio. Start at it the starts lighting. with the lighting. The lighting yeah. starts to retouch because the lighting dictates is the blueprint for the Everything retouch. Else. Yeah. So what begins to happen is Day doesn't teach him his style because that's your that's your special sauce. Mm-hmm. He does teach you the basic of getting to the style. Mm-hmm. So you have a nice solid image to begin with. Now let's talk about your style. Yes. You may want to you may want to dodge and burn this way, like. Um, Desiree Madsen. Oh, yeah. She has a particular look. She's an amazing photographer. She has an amazing look to her style. But at, but if you lift up her style, the retouching is the same. same. It's all it's basic. You do this. Thing. You can retouch like Joe Grimes. You can retouch like yep. uh, Bryce. You can retouch like any of them. But what happens is we're looking at their style, not necessarily their retouch. So people take their classes because they want to, they want their work to look like Joe Grimes. They want their work mm-hmm. to look like Sue Bryce. And it's like, we don't do that. If you come to my lighting class, I'm going to teach you how to light. I'm not going to teach you to light like me. I'm going to teach you the science of light. They teach us the science of retouching. Yeah. How you apply it to your to work you. becomes your art. Because to, to take it a step further, say, for instance, if you have brands like Anastasia, Anastasia Beverly Hills, they have a certain style in which they retouch. How as opposed retouch, to Fenty. As opposed to Fenty, as opposed to Mac. As opposed Those, to Revlon. If you look at three images from them, none of them look the same. So I'll teach you the basics. This is how this, you get it here. Now let's look at an image and you can tell from me teaching you the basics, what they use, how to get to that image. So clean you up, make the skin look beautiful, and then afterwards we work on the stylizing. So my next course, I'm trying to decide because it, 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 it was either going to be before Thanksgiving or after Thanksgiving. And so the next one is coming up. I'm going to probably today. I'm gonna, probably next week or so. Yeah, I'm going to say when exactly the date is going to be. But I teach online, online courses. I do one-on-ones too, but I, this one is going to be a group course, um, Teach and Retouch. Everything is recorded. And we record it, you get to ask questions live. And I know sometimes when you're watching YouTube videos that you can't ask them, why did you do that? Or, you know, what made you, you know, you get to ask me live why something is or how or, something is. Or he'll repeat a step. He said, let me do it again. Yeah. And he'll do the step again. Because you don't get that. Because if you go back and rewind the YouTube video, they're doing the same thing again. And he'll go, okay, let me show you this way. Yeah. You know, there's so more than one way to skin ways. a cat. Yeah, I was going to say, so many different ways to do something. And um, I like doing the group classes because when you do the group classes, you get to learn how people see things. And and not only that, when you do a group class, someone may have a question but are afraid to ask. Yes. And then the next person will ask the question. Oh, I wanted to ask that question. And they will go, why didn't you yes. just ask the question? Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of that. Fear is sounding stupid. You know, that's a, that's a real thing. I bad to sound stupid and learn yeah. instead of instead of being stupid and not know a damn thing. Yeah. And we record it, and then afterwards, uh, I give them the recording after the class is done, and also I give them homework because I want to make sure that they got the lesson. It's very important to me that you got the lesson and you didn't spend your money with me and didn't learn anything. Like I, I don't like because that. the kiss of death for any teacher is I didn't learn anything. Yeah, that would drive me crazy. It, it would drive me crazy. So that's my next yeah. course. I'm teaching um, retouching. Skin always would be the basic. That would be the start. And afterwards, we're going to do some color grading to create a story. So that's next. And you, Dallas, have his book. Outside and of the difference with my book versus anybody else is you have access to me. Um, lots of times when people are selling merchandise, our relationship stops at the shopping cart. And it's like, no, please call me because you may have a question about something. For example, there's lots of times I've used a medium format camera in um, in, um, in a photo shoot and I, and I match it exactly how I shot it. So if I shot 
past the, uh, the sink, the lighting sink of um, Canon, you're going to set up the camera as you see it there and you want to know why you have a black bar. If you don't know why, call me. But I do explain all that. There's a whole section of the book of how to read the book. I explain these things as to why you make it was as to why I use the medium format camera versus using the 35 millimeter. But I'm always a phone call away because it's all it's not about this. I can teach you F8. Anybody can teach you F8. But sometimes having a conversation with the teacher um, solidifies a whole lot of fog that you may have in your brain. You know, if that makes any sense. So yeah, I try absolutely. to remove the fog, and the fog is a phone call away. And so many times, people have not called me. And it's mm -hmm. like, you know, you could have, they'll be at a photo shoot, and they'll show me photos that they had issues with. And I'm like, how come you didn't just call me? Oh, I didn't think I could. Call me. Or we'll have, it, or somebody will be at a photo shoot, and they'll say, hey, this isn't working. And, we're like, and we'll say, turn the camera around. Turn the like, camera on, and we can fix you. We can fix you right, right there. there. I love that. In my, uh, I did a podcast with a, a local photographer. He's a good friend of mine. His name is Michael Eastman. And he was oh, Michael. you know, talking yeah. about the, the zone system, and he was like trying to figure it out. And he goes, something wasn't clicking. So he got the phone book out and called Ansel Adams. And he answered. Hey. <laughs> can you yeah. imagine? Calling him and be like, hey, this part about the zone system, I'm not understanding. I'm like talking to you over the phone. <laughs> and and Ansel said it in English. This is it. This is what it is. Because yeah. people, for, we tend to make things more complicated than they need to be. Yeah. Uh, we think it's yeah. some mystical, magical thing, and it really isn't. And sometimes it's just talking in English yeah. or talking in a language you and I can meet at. So when Day teaches his class, if there's a makeup artist in the class, they will talk to that person like a makeup artist and then yeah. dodging and burning clicks, highlights and shadows click. Yeah. He said it's no different. So sometimes having that conversation, me understanding your, for lack of a better word, your love language, I'll speak <laughs> to you in your love language for you to understand why F8 works here better than 2.8. And I've taught makeup artists how to retouch. So say things as a photographer don't want to do the work, they say take these images and makeup artists are tired of it, or makeup artists want to know how to shoot because they're not getting the work that they want. So we taught we makeup teach, artists, we teach makeup artists how to shoot, how to shoot, and teach them how to retouch their work. So it's a ton. It's it's a ton of people. I enjoy it. I love. We love education. I love education. Love teaching new um, concepts to people, and because you hear so much, it's so hard. You take thirty hours to do this. You take this to do this. I had a friend who did a photo shoot and. Um, he sent the images to the agency and he was like, can we, can we get the raws? And he asked me why. And I said, because you must have over retouched the photo. And he was like, let me, I said, let me see the work. He showed me the work. I said, you definitely did too much. And he was like, how would you have done this? I hopped on the Zoom, went, we did the course. I think I retouched the image in seven minutes and he was so pissed off. <laughs> he was like, what? And I was like, you don't have to do all of that stuff that you did. And he was like, are you kidding me? sent those images in and they took those images. So it's just demystifying a lot of stuff that you hear, or how hard it is or how strenuous this thing is. Or you're not, or they think you're not working hard enough. Yeah. Like a good image needs to be retouched for three hours. It's like, no, no it doesn't. It doesn't. It really doesn't. So, yeah. Know what you're doing and, and- Know how to light it properly. Starting with the lighting, mm -hmm. it dictates everything else. So we don't like- yeah. to fix you gotta it. have a plan. You gotta Absolutely. have a plan. Literally, the first the first step to my retouching is the it's called the plan, making a plan of your retouching. And yeah, that's crazy. Great yeah. minds think alike. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Well, guys, thank you so much. Um, it was a pleasure talking to you. I feel like we could just keep going on, and maybe we should. I would love to have you guys back on, and and maybe do a deep dive in lighting or or retouching, and um, love to learn more about your guys' education. So. It would be pleasure. It would be an honor. Plus, we have so many mutual friends. I didn't know we had that many mutual friends, but yeah, we can do yeah. a round table with all of them. They can <laughs> because they'll tell you how mean I am. So oh, yeah, oh, and how Dallas put them on the spot to shoot, but they didn't want to. Yeah, I'm the, Simon, I'm the Simon Cowell of the group. That. I'm the Simon Cowell. So oh, I love I, that. I remember one time we had a girl, and she was trying to get an angle, and I said, "Get on the floor, get on the floor." I put my foot about back Whitney and pushed, pushed her to the, the floor. floor. <laughs> I said, now get the shot. She's like, oh my God, it's amazing down here. I'm like, yeah. So. 
you have those moments. Yeah, so if you got the round group together, you'll get those you'll stories. Get a whole bunch of stories. One girl we shot, she was shooting, and I kept cheap. He's like Dave. Dave wants to step into fashion, but he's so locked into this portrait mode. Mm -hmm. So she's the same thing. She's locked into this portrait mode, and she did something, and it had the five in one. And I bopped on the head and said, stop doing that. And she said, oh. <laughs> stop making a portrait. Not a portrait. And she yeah. said, oh, my God. And it's like, that's what, those are how my teachers were oh, to you'll me. Hear, so. You'll hear some of these stories. But anyway. Yeah. But no, thank pleasure. you so much for having us. Yeah, absolutely. I look forward to meeting you guys one day. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank absolutely. you. Thank you. We would love to come out and go into your basement. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's have basement time. That's it. Ooh, wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. And on so that note, uh, I appreciate everyone who's still with us, um, the three of you. <laughs> so <laughs> to, uh, to stream this, you can stream this on the apps. You can go to learn.proedu.com if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, these are going to be completely free to watch. So uh, love you guys' support. And hope to see you.